At what point did you feel comfortable with showing the world who Allen Iverson was? From day one. The easiest thing in the world is to be yourself. Everybody else taking up, why not be you? You know, why not want to be the person that God created? That's a, that's a blessing. You know, if I died and came back, I would want to be Allen Iverson all over again. That was actually probably one of my my best outfits at that time because being the circumstances of what they were back then, you know, I had to come with my best outfit knowing that uh, Sports Illustrated was doing that, so that was the cream of the crop right there. I got that herringbone, some older dudes from my neighborhood, they told me that um, if I scored 40 um, against our rival team that, that they would give me a herringbone. I remember during the game, I had like 14 or something like that going into the a couple minutes left in the third, so I had a, a ways to go to get the 40. I looked over there at them and they had it in the box and lifted it up and let me see it. And once I saw it, it was over. I just started going crazy. <laughs> Ended up with like 40 something. I would kill to have that, you know, that, that chain right there. Um, but as I, I got older and that didn't mean too much uh, to me then. Now, looking back on it, I would love to have something like that. Matter of fact, I might, you know, get one done, you know, just cause, you know, show it off, act like that was the original one. <laughs> if people don't see this, then I can get away with it. You gotta talk about the Jordan 11. For sure. That was like a dream come true for me, being that we were sponsored by Nike. I think the first year we just had some regular joints, but then when I knew we were wearing them. It was it was a wrap. You know what I mean? I, I felt like a superhero in them. For me to get those, I used to always tell coach I ripped mine or they were wearing out on the bottom, whatever, to get a new pair. As an athlete, I felt like, you know, you play like you look. You know, you look good, you play good. Growing up, you know, I ain't really care too much about clothes. As long as my kicks was right, I was good. So I wanted to be like Mike, for sure. I mean, you know, just like the commercial. Like, I really actually felt like that. You know, when the commercial came out, I was like, yo, yeah, me too. My mom, you know, told me I could be anything that I wanted to be. He gave me the vision. I wanted to be the guy that if you came to see, you know, you was gonna go home with that one guy on your mind. When Black Jesus on the court, yeah, everybody gonna know who 23 is, but when you leave tonight, you gonna know who number three is. I remember the suit. My agent took me out, got me measured and everything. And you know, that was a great experience, something that I remember and cherish for the rest of my life. Just to have, you know, my first tailor-made suit, I felt like I had arrived, felt good. Do you remember that feeling of uh, draft night? I knew I was gonna go number one, but I didn't know. You know what I mean? Like, when you go through so many trials and tribulations, so many ups and downs in your life, that was one of those times where I was, you know, it was a kind of a happy nervous, you know what I mean? Because I did feel like I was gonna get drafted, but I really wanted to be number one. The number one thing that I, would never forget when it come to my NBA career is that day, just being drafted. As a competitor, going up against your idol, what was that like? It was surreal, a moment that I never forget. You know, obviously being on the court with my idol, somebody that I still admire. Me and you talked about it a little early before we started. It's a great feeling, it's an honor to have guys that grow up and want to be like me. You know, I know how they feel because I felt that way. Once the ball went up in the air, though, all of that just, just go away. And you just start playing basketball, start doing what you love. So we talk about the crossover. That was just, I was going to try my move against the greatest player in the world. I mean, I told my friends, you know, before the game and in, even leading up to the game that one day if I got the opportunity, I was going to try it. What did the quest represent to you? A big, long journey. It took a lot of hard work to be able to one day have your own signature shoe. That was my dream, obviously. You know, you can go back to Mike and everything that, you know, he accomplished, you know, him having his own signature shoe. I, I remember them and it didn't take much. Like, I, I don't think I changed much because, you know, when somebody hands you a shoe and said, this is your shoe, probably could have handed me a Timberland and I would have played in that. <laughs> you know, it just was icing on the cake that they look good enough to where as people still wear them 25 or more years later. You know what I mean? I think that's dope. You talk about the braids a little bit. How did you choose the styles? If it was a big game, I might have the patience to sit there for an hour and some change. But if it was a game where I wanted to get some rest and I didn't really care about the look or anything like that, you know, I just get me something real quick, like a national game or something like that. I get something real crazy. I started 
with the headband after the 2001 season. After that point, I never took it off after I started wearing it. Cause I just trip off how guys get mad during the game and they'll take their headband off and not wear it no more. Like the headband has something to do with them not playing well. Where did the style and the uh, necessity merge? Mike. I mean, I always felt like he looked like a superhero out there. You know what I mean? If you look at him, look at highlights today. If you look at him back then when he played, no one looked like him. Obviously the greatest player, but he always looked the smoothest too. I used to love when he had the ball head with the goatee. Then he had the knee brace, but he wore it on his shin. And then with the wristband. Well, obviously I bit the wristband from him. I used to like to wear the black socks, the Mike Tyson look. And then in the sleeve, I had got hurt. And then I actually like was wearing it to hold a bursa sack down because I had swelling in my elbow. When I got surgery, I used to wear it to, you know, press the, um, you know, the fluid down. And then when my arm healed, I was so used to wearing it. I was watching a video one time and he had a sleeve on in the video. <laughs> and I was like, okay, now it's out of control. You know what I mean? And then I just started seeing everybody wear the sleeve and I just think it's dope, you know, that I, that I started. And people actually call it the AI sleeve. Messed up by not copyrighting that. Can you talk about the influence that hip hop culture on your style? I'm just a big, like a real, real big fan. You know what I mean? And then, you know how hip hop and basketball go hand in hand. You know what I mean? We hooking up at parties and clubs and stuff like that. And you grow a relationship with those guys and you end up, you know, just being around them. You like their swag, they like yours. Do you remember the relationship with Jay Kiss and the, the Reebok commercial? Hell yeah. yeah, that's my man. How, how'd that collab come about? That's my dog. I mean, because that's my man. And I thought it was a cool idea. In part two, did you write that verse? Yeah, I wrote it. Jay did tell you I wrote it. And, 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 and I'm telling you, like, I, I'm not saying it like, bragging like I was some great rapper because I was terrible. You know, I wanted to do it because my, my homeboys wanted me to do it to try to, you know, make a better way for them. It was a bad idea. You know, I'm so embarrassed for doing that. Now, looking back on it and then listening to it, oh my God, it's torture. We can get into the tattoos. I, I was really addicted to them. I had one when I got into the league. I just couldn't afford them. You know, I would have been got a, a bunch of them. But once I got into the league, you know, I just went crazy because I was able to able to do it, you know, and all my tattoos mean something. You know, I couldn't believe that I got that many. I can't stand needles anyway. It started with me and my mom. My mom was real big on it. I used to be five, six, seven years old. I was infatuated with it. Just jewelry, period. I was just a big fan of it. And it always stuck with me. And I, it was just always a dream of mine to one day be able to get the jewelry that I actually wanted. I can imagine myself, if, if God blessed me to be 90 some 100 years old, I still had jewelry on, because I love it. It's just a part of me, it's who I am. I just feel like the way I put it together is, you know, the flyest way. Who influenced me a lot was probably Puff. I played in the rucker with him, like right when I got into the league, and I got a chance to hang out with him and go to, you know, with him to his jeweler and stuff like that. I was like, yo, this dude, know where is that? You even mentioned Tim's Earth. That was such a part of the culture. Yeah, I mean, and it's crazy because I used to wear them like every day. The Tim's were just, I mean, I loved them. And I did the photo shoot today. I think those were the first time I had on Tim's in maybe about 20 or more years. And that was actually my favorite thing to wear besides sneakers. That picture right there was so real. Even with those size 4X, Sweats, good gracious, that's crazy. Look at them. I mean, them straight hammer pants. I don't think that style's never coming back. You wear it now, it's like you have no choice but to wear it. Like, that's all you own. <laughs> yeah. And then the next one, we got the blue fur. I think I was about 20 something then. I actually wore that one All Star Weekend, like maybe two years ago. That was in my mom crib. It was so big, man, I had to get it cut all up, man. I made earmuffs for my daughters. That thing was so big, man. I'm talking about shack size. The clothes I wore was so big. Like I used to go to the, um, the big and tall, you know what I mean? And I would go in there and wipe them out. Like the big guys on the squad would be mad as hell. You know what I mean, man? We went in there and you took everything out of there. You know what I'm saying? All the big t-shirts, all the big jeans, everything. And the crazy part about it is them big ass jeans and pants and sweats, the bottoms was always tapered. So you were able to actually see your shoe. Yeah, that was all white party in Atlantic City. 4040 Club, I think. 
I still don't do like real tight, tight, you know what I mean? Like where you can see how much money I got in my pocket. My whole thing was, you know, I am that, that's where I come from. The stuff that I wore, I would have, you know, been wearing it already. I just, I, you know, like I said, I couldn't afford it. Everybody talk about my dress code and how I dress. All I was doing is dressing like the guys that I grew up around. You remember in 2005 when they implemented the dress code? Mm -hmm. And I just put my own flavor with it. December 05, you know, I wouldn't have wore that um, out nowhere. But the outfit, um, November's, you know, 07. The next one, I would I wore that out somewhere. When I was young, man, I never wore no suit or, or dressed up to go to the park to play. I always thought that you know, wearing a suit and all that stuff was very, very uncomfortable. But it's way more professional. Being older now, it even looked better. Getting right is is nice. What was that moment like being inducted to the Hall of Fame? It was a tribute to everybody that helped me get there. You can't accomplish something like that by yourself, man. You don't do that by yourself. I thank myself, you know what I mean, because I put in the work and I went out there and I played every game like it was my last. Like we talked about in the beginning, you know, I was just happy to be drafted, being from where I'm from. That was one of the, you know, some icing on the cake right there, you know, to, to be one of the best to ever play, you know, in the world.